Imagine this, you just got the gig. You're excited, you're eager to learn the songs, and the MD sends over the practice materials, and then the thing happens. The songs have no guitar in them, and you're playing guitar the whole set. What do you do? Today I wanna to talk about something that many of you have asked me about on YouTube and it's what do I play when there's no guitar? Now, there's no one right way to approach this situation, but I found after several years of trial and error, this is something that I've gotten decent at. So today I'm gonna to be breaking down how I write guitar parts when there's no obvious part to play. The song I've chosen to partify, if you will, is Ingrid Andress' cover of On Fire. If you haven't heard the original by Switchfoot, then definitely go check it out after this video. But I think this version of the song is actually going to be perfect for us because while there's a couple notable guitar parts that we definitely want to grab, there's tons of space for us to use our imagination. And a lot of the guitar parts I can pick out are pretty atmospheric, which typically, keyword being typically, means the music director will want us to play something different live. Now, whenever I'm in the position of having to come up with my own guitar parts, I usually focus on three main components. First, what's the band setup? Now, this one may seem obvious, but the type of instruments we're playing with is going to greatly influence the parts we choose to play. In this case, we'll pretend it's a standard full band setup, but we're the only electric guitar. Number two, what's the vibe of the song? My goal is to always land on guitar parts that sound like they could have been a part of the recording. You don't want to just shred all over the top. I mean, there's moments where that can definitely be cool, but that shouldn't be your default as a side man. Listen to the track and let it guide you. Is there stuff the producer put in there that you can take from or build upon? Are there melodic ideas in the track already there that you can build from? We'll explain more on this in a second. Number three, what's the vibe of the show? Some artists like to play their songs exactly like the record live and others want to change it up a bit. This is something you're just going to have to gauge and feel out in your approach to writing guitar parts. So some questions that I'll typically ask myself are, are all these arrangements big rock arrangements so my part should be reflective of that? Is this in a more intimate moment in the set so my part should be more sparse and delicate? And what is the guitar typically doing in other arrangements in the show? In this case, I want to keep the song that sort of bright, uplifting country vibe and since we're saying we're the only electric guitar here we want to make sure we're not only playing atmosphere. A good rule of thumb for live is to amplify and what I mean by that is in the driving moments make sure you're driving it even harder and in the down moments make sure you're really pulling back and making it super intimate and of course, make sure you capture all the signature parts of the track. For those of you curious, I'm gonna use my Quad Cortex on this one and I'm using my JM Worship preset. I'll put a link to it in the description if you wanna check it out. I've set the BPM to 85, that's what the song is at. Yeah, we'll just see what we can come up with and we'll go part by part. Okay, so right off the bat, you hear that? I don't know if that's exactly guitar. It could be guitar layered with a synth. It could be guitar layered with pedal steel. It could be a lot of things. But because that's the most dominant part, I'm gonna copy that melody. So I'm gonna pull out my slide. And I think I want a lot of reverb on this one. I'm wondering if I can make this compression maybe just a little more aggressive. I went ahead and switched my delay to a quarter note and then I'm gonna actually dial back the reverb just, just a little. Let's take a look at the first verse here, right? And then we'll try and catch the chords at the same time. So that's the one, five, six, and the four. I think this is one of those instances where live, I probably wouldn't play anything at all. Now, because this is YouTube and we all don't want to sit still for 30 seconds watching me sit here, we'll say the MD told us we need to play something, right? So this is a good spot for maybe swelly type things, but I would keep it super sparse. Something in that ballpark is what I would do if I had to play something. So now we're on to the first pre, which is a short one, and I think we just have that hook coming back. The chorus has a few different ways we can go. Diamonds are always a good standby. We could keep doing slide, but I think if we're the only guitar, we probably don't want to be slip sliding around the whole time. So I think we should try and catch that sort of palm muted guitar part. I'm gonna start with a light drive, quarter note delay, and a short reverb. Mm -hmm. 
we may want a slightly cleaner tone. I'm gonna actually amp up the compression a little. I think the thing to remember here is that, you know, we still have our slide on. So is this part gonna be easy to do without taking the slide off? I go to. You know, I think realistically this part probably doesn't have delay on it. We're the only guitar here, so I think sonically it's kind of nice to have a little extra fill, but I'm gonna turn the delay down a bit and I think we'll basically have it. So that feels like a good part that we can probably get to easily without having to kill our slide. So let's take a look at the second verse here. Do you hear that, the whole note acoustic? slide guitar there. I think we'll stick in the slide guitar realm. It sounds like that initial part is just a swell on the one, which is an E. Maybe I could do it like this. That's nice. Yeah, maybe volume slow it in. And then there's that signature slow slide. I think we definitely want those two things. I'm curious if there's maybe some extra notage here we could do. Now, we don't want to do too much because the melody is moving a lot and we want that to be the star of the show, but we don't necessarily want to play the exact same thing we did on the first verse. So let's, let's try it again and see if there's something there. about that you know it's just that little extra sprinkle to make it a little bit different and as you heard that strong pre-chorus melody comes right back in so I just hop on that line right after the verse now let's go to course two there's a lot of things we could play whatever that might be that the acoustics doing we could do that droney with tons of reverb or we could go back to that pluck right that pluck thing is probably the dominant thing, at least to my ear, but in this instance, we're saying we're the only guitar, right? And this is second chorus and we want more energy. So I think what we should do is kind of big country chords here. And maybe what we'll do is cool voicings, right? So we're gonna keep these top two strings open, the B and the E, right? So. And that'll give us a little bit of that sort of chimey acoustic feel. And then we're gonna jump up to that cool part. I think the main thing we're gonna want is just the bigger reverb here. This bridge part is pretty self-explanatory. We definitely wanna lay out in the first half. Let's make it a really down moment. And then I think we should just creep in with some really sparkly kind of modulated out chords. Add a little texture, add that modulated reverb going on. So even though there's some sparkly high pick stuff, I think that's maybe just kind of lost on the moment. So I think we're gonna get further with just kind of the. And just letting that shimmer. That also helps us with our dynamic because it puts us in position to easily build into that last chorus. We made it to the end. Let's take a look at the final chorus and the outro and all that stuff. So we could definitely do chords here. But I'm thinking let's change it up just to make the last course feel like it has a little something special. Let's go to this, back to our third pattern, but what if we kind of strum through it? And then there's that cool bass line part, the... So we'll find a way to throw that into our line and then the outro is fairly simple, right? We got that same hook. And then there's this cool picking part. I like this sort of dreamy thing we have going on. It's less distortion than I was initially thinking I would do, but I think this feels kind of good. Let's check it out. Now that we got all our parts figured out and our sounds programmed, let's hear them in context. Here we go.
go about writing guitar parts for songs that don't have an obvious guitar part. In review, we want to think about what the band setup is and what the other musicians are playing. We want to think about what the arrangements are like throughout the show and what our part typically is in them. And most importantly, we really want to listen to the song and let the melodies and the instrumentation of the production guide us. The more you do it, the better you'll get. So seriously, go pick some songs that have no guitar or very little guitar and see if you can come up with your own parts that sound like they belong on the record. I've got links to presets, including the one I used today in the description, and there's links to other gear and stuff like that in case you're interested. Be sure to leave a like on the video before you head out and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Share it with a fellow guitarist and I'll catch you next time.